I'm Mike Biffle and I am an indie game developer. Uh, I made Thomas Was Alone, which was a massively overrated uh, 2D puzzle platformer. I'm now working on a disappointing follow-up volume. Oh, it's good to hear you're so positive. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, since obviously Thomas Was Alone has garnered such a massive fan success, um, did you feel a lot of pressure on you with doing volume? It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's scary because I, the thing with Thomas was no one knew who I was or what I was making or whatever. It was a very kind of, it, it, was, it, was, it was something I had no expectations. I was waiting for Thomas was alone to come out. Whereas with volume, obviously, there's a certain degree of expectation because people are familiar with Thomas Flett. So it's, it's scary, but in a good way. It's nice to know that people care. Is that, was that part of one of the reasons why you kept its development a little bit quiet at first, even though you were teaching Initially, it yeah, no, initially definitely it was, because there, there was a point where, obviously in the first couple of months, where the game was coming together, you've got placeholder art, everything's a bit ropey, and other game developers can look at that and they can understand, oh, this is going to become this. Uh, but people who maybe aren't as familiar with seeing games that early on can get a bit sniffy and can get a little bit, you know, not be less impressed and it can, it can create a bad, bad image. So I was aware that more people were watching who maybe didn't understand what a game looks like for the first couple of months. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it made sense to wait until the game had hit a certain degree of, kind of visual polish, I guess. Did you have fun with the hiding of it? Even you had it in your little Twitter handle for a little bit? Um, it, was, it was fun. I'm a bit of a cheeky kind of... <laughs> I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the tease. I enjoyed it. It, was, it. it felt nice to kind of make it... Uh, a cool little secret. People had fun with it. People were making jokes about what they thought it might be and stuff, which was which was kind of fun. It was kind of silly. And yeah. I like that kind of thing. So yeah, um, I remember you saying with Thomas, his visual style was also kind of came about because of the limitations you had as yourself of being able to do the art yeah. for it. Obviously, volume is far more advanced in terms of art style. Is that now because you've got other people helping you with all the work? Yeah, basically that's money and time and people. That's all that is. Is, is I have the resources now that I can. I can't make GTA 5, but I can, great game by the way, but I can, <laughs> I can grab a few people and I have an actual concept I to today, um, and we can make something cool and kind of collaborate and work together to, to make something polished, if smaller in scope, um, and the plan is just to keep doing that and hopefully if the games keep being successful then we can scale that up slowly and kind of make bigger and bigger and prettier and prettier games. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's been fun playing with those toys. Cool. Um, have you had the idea of the volume in your head for a while? Has it been something you've always kind of wanted to do and now you have the means to do it? Um, yeah, I mean, volume, I think whenever, I imagine a lot of kids, I know I was, when I was, I played Metal Gear Solid 1 when I was about, I think I was about 14, 13, 14, um, and it just had such a massive impression on me as a kid. I was just like, this is incredible. And I, want, and I started doing that thing that kids do where I was daydreaming about what my version would do. You'd be able to like bounce things around and make noise and, blah, blah, blah. and, I, and I was all these ideas as a kid, thinking them through, and then became a game developer. I never got a chance to work on a stealth game. Tried many times, um, but never quite got that opportunity. Um, so when I went indie, it made sense that, oh, I'm gonna make that game that I've been designing in my head since I was 14. And that's what volume is, volume is now. That stealth game that's been in my head for so long. Okay, that's really interesting. Is that also part of some of the reasons why it's got a similar look to the Metal Gear VR missions to it? Or? Um, well, I think I think a lot like Thomas that came out of the realities of what the game is. So the game is player generated, so it comes with like a bunch of levels I've made, obviously. Yeah. But once you finish those levels, you can get a lot of additional content. You can get some. Um, uh, you, can, you can build your own levels. So making the graphics very simple, pulling that back, doing simple blocks, made a lot of sense because it's easy to understand, the player understands what's going on. And they can, they can have that experience and have it make sense. So that was worth doing. Okay, cool. Um, I know you're not going to tell me because you've not announced <laughs> it, but what, what is the narrative edge behind volume as the levels you're showing today uh, seem to take place almost inside like a warehouse, it looks like? When you, once you finish you're the level, you get a, taken to like yeah, a You're in a warehouse. Playing as a, a young man um, and he's running around inside a virtual environment. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, uh, no, there's a there's a big story thing uh, which we'll be announcing uh, at Game City, which is in October 19th to 26th. We've got a big event happening. Still top secret. Um, get everyone who wants to go and take it to a secret location and do a big event. Um, 
it should be quite fun and exciting. Um, but and at that point then, you know, I'll talk about the story, I'll talk about the, uh, the actors, and some amazing actors coming into the game and doing their thing, uh, which is great. Because obviously, Thomas Fallot, we played with some cool stuff in voiceover, and it's kind of a real extension on that. Okay, that's really cool. Um, how how has developing the volume been different for Thomas? Because now you're working with a lot of people, and you're not all in the, in the same area, you do quite a lot of like, uh, location based. Um, Skype's really useful, um, <laughs> basically. No, that's it, really. I mean, I'm only working with the people, the whole team working on volume, the people I've worked with before. Okay. Um, people I've worked with when working at other games companies. Uh, so there's kind of, they're all friends, they're all people who I have a personal relationship with. Um, and then it just becomes a matter of being on Skype emailing files back and forth and just chatting throughout the day. Um, I like this, I don't like that, kind of making that work. And it's worked pretty well. Because, yeah, didn't you have uh, Nemo when you nearly deleted everything? Uh, uh, yeah, I had um, <laughs> Adobe Creative Suite um, run like a cloud-based saving yeah. thing. And they, they reactivated after it had not been working for a while and it decided to update all my files to what they were in April. So it basically deleted my entire game. Managed to get back home, so it's all good. And now I use another service to back up the <laughs> uh, So that's coming up. <laughs> um, how's it been working with, what's it been like working with Sony for the PS4 and the Vita stuff, seeing as uh, Thorsten's Alone was done by Bosser and Curve for yeah. the other platforms? So it's early days, it's, early, it's very early days, but yeah, no, they're brilliant. Sony are really, really, really pushing to make it work with us in this, and give us the opportunity to make the games we want to make, how we want to make them. I, I can't say enough nice things about them, they've been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, you got to sit next to it in your sheet outside, you can't make it. I did, uh, you yeah. saw me up there. Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that was fun, man, that was good. It was a, it was a good seat. It was yeah, a good it was, seat. Yeah, it was great to be. You and Rami just like right in front. Yeah. Um, so, ha, seeing as you just mentioned earlier that you were pretty much not in the spotlight at all, and then Thomas came out and it sort of How's it actually felt as a person to be caught, caught up in all of that? I mean, it is odd. It is odd. I get recognised a lot, which is strange. People whispering your name behind yeah, you. Yeah, this is happening. You, you whispered my name once <laughs> to your friend. Is that my Bethel? Um, which is odd. And it happens. It happens. I mean, obviously, events like this, I'll get, you know, people politely asking for a photo or whatever, or an autograph or whatever happens, which is lovely and really flattering and nice. Um, it's weirder when I'm in the shops and a uh, kid will run up to me, which does have also happen, but it's it's wonderful. It's lovely that people care about the work I do enough that they are interested enough in me. Um, so it's it's always always taken as a compliment. It's always very much appreciated. That's all. Doesn't feel like hounding. Does it? No, no, no. It's um, yeah, the final question is kind of a little bit of a downer, I know, you know not, it's not really a big focus on volume as such, but more in your career. Um, you know, obviously you worked at Blitz Games for a bit, and obviously the closure of it and everything. Yeah. Um, it led you to write an article for Eurogamer. Um, but would you would you remind would you advise the guys at Blitz that you've almost got another like you have, or do you think that it's not something everyone can do? Um, I think it's what, it's something that a lot of people want to do. It's not something a lot of people don't want to do. I don't think I don't think traditional kind of big team dev is better or worse. I mean, yeah, it's a different way of making games. Increasingly, so I think that actually the worlds are diverging a lot in terms of the approaches and the way the games are made. Which is a good thing. Variety is cool. Um, so no, I I know a lot of the guys at Blitz are going off and doing a bunch of different jobs and different things. A lot of indie companies are starting up. A lot of those guys are going to work at different studios. It's all good. It's all good. I just you know, it's at the moment it's just about making sure that there are people yeah. left behind. Yeah. But no, it's cool. It's it, I think I'm sure lots of people 